Hello everyone, back to you today's third video. We're going to do a GFS Ensembles watch for today's uh, third video. We're going to go through all 20 plus members of the GFS Ensemble, see what they're all showing for this particularly cold period, but maybe on the way, um, starting in around a week's time and going through into the final days of February and into the start of March as well. Um, I'll bring you up to date with the latest operational GFS before we have a look at the Ensembles. Um, we'll begin having a look at the GEM and if we have time at the end, as it's updating as I'm talking, we may just have a quick look at the ECDF and see how far we can get with it. So a lot to cram in, um, and I'll get on with it for you in a second. Just say that today's first video was our uh, third and final spring analogues uh, update. That has now been placed onto the spring uh, forecast and update page uh, with a written summary so have a look at that if you would like to do that and of course we did the gas of this Sunday roundup as well released around lunchtime and uh, it goes over the chance of cold weather and also lots of things like solar activity uh, what's happening in the strategy that kind of thing so that's here on the home page you'll find it just above the stow desk have a look and see what you think right I'm going to try and rattle through this as quickly as I can got a lot to cram in so I'm going to begin with the GM this is the latest uh, from the Canadian Canadian model just updated around an hour ago uh, and we're starting off on Thursday we've got a ridge of high pressure over UK and extending to our east into next weekend we find that the high pressure becomes increasingly strong over Scandinavia the winds are backing into the east here we go we're off and running with a cold spell from the GM that's how things look as we get through to Monday 26th of February week tomorrow in a proper bitterly cold east wind there's the upper air temperatures Showing that the minus 10 ice cream is flooding across the country. Look how cold it is downstream to the east as well. And then this bitterly cold weather continues up to day 10, which is Wednesday, the 28th of February. We end February on a bitterly cold note. Easterly winds screaming in uh, the air from the Euros. And look at the upper air temperatures by day 10. This is the coldest we've seen so far. Uh, this, uh, this is actually bringing... Temperatures very close to minus 20 at 850 HPA into the far southeast. That's kind of on a par with the severe cold that we had in January 1987. Um... It's over the top, and I think it's very unlikely that we'll verify, but it just goes to show you that we are looking at potentially a very cold spell of weather setting up here for the final uh, week or so uh, of uh, February, or the final days, I should probably say, of February. Right, so this is how a GFS is uh, looking. Again, it's just updated around an hour ago. This is the operational run of the GFS. Starting on Thursday, taking the high pressure over and to the east of the British Isles. Winds already beginning to drift in from the east as early as uh, the second half of the coming week. It's not a particularly cold EC, but you'll certainly notice it uh, at the end of the week. And then we go into next weekend, and this is when it all starts kicking off, of course. The high pressure's strengthening over Scandinavia. We've got these bitterly cold EC winds feeding in again there's the upper air temperature showing that by sunday the minus 10 ice firm is pushing through the country bringing bitterly cold air in from the east and no doubt quite a lot of heavy snow showers as well and then things get more severe as we go through to a week tomorrow, Monday, 26th of February. We've got these east to north east winds dragging in uh, very cold air. Notice the kinks in the isobars. That's troughs and features coming through, uh, just enhancing the snow risk. There's the upper air temperatures. Not as extremely cold as um, what the uh, GM was showing. But even so, it's cold enough. That's plenty cold enough to be going on with. And uh, it will feel really quite bitter. We go up to day 10. And we just maintain these easterly winds. It stays bitterly cold, wind in from the east. Um, again, we've got kinks in the ice bars indicating enhanced risk of snow showers or maybe longer spells of snow coming in from the east with these bitter uh, easterly winds. And we maintain those very cold upper air temperatures. Well, in the extended range, we try to move low pressure up from the south. That brings a big snow event to virtually the whole of the UK as this low pressure trundles up from the south gauges with the cold air the air is easily supporting snow so uh widespread snow event there as we go into the early days of uh march it maintains uh cold weather essentially 
So how much support does that really cold uh, outlook we just saw from the GFS operational run have in terms of its ensembles? Well, this is the, uh, we're going to look at the GFS now, the um, GFS ensembles. So we're going to begin with the control uh, member of the uh, GFS ensemble. So this is running at a slightly lower resolution compared to all other ensemble members, but at a higher resolution. Uh, it's running at a slightly uh, lower resolution, I should say, compared to the operational GFS, but at a slightly higher resolution compared to all other ensemble members. So it's been a very, very long few days as we've been sorting out this cold uh, weather. So we're going to begin on Thursday. Again, we've got the high pressure over UK. We're taking it up to the uh, northeast. Let's run you through into uh, next weekend. This takes us to Saturday the 24th of February and then we're on into uh, Sunday 25th. Yes, we've got high pressure over Scandinavia. 1,050 millibars but winds are turning into the east and that's bitterly cold air being dragged in and no doubt a lot of heavy snow coming in on that easterly as well. That looks uh, really cold by Tuesday 27th of uh, February. Uh, let's have a look at the upper air temperatures there. Uh, and yes, really cold air, minus 10 iceberg through the country. Go below minus 10 probably uh, over to the east as well. So let's run through the extended range. We keep those cold and very snowy easterly winds continuing. Some sort of low pressures just developing there to the southeast on the 1st of March. That's bringing heavy snow to southern and eastern parts of the country. It looks like a really disruptive spell of weather. And it stays cold as we go through the first week of March and we reach the end of the uh, run, which is Tuesday 9th of March, and it still is generally cold. Trying to turn milder from the south, trying to drag out some milder air, but still essentially in quite a cold block uh, pattern. Right, let's have a look at ensemble member uh, number one. They're saying on Thursday, high pressure's reaching up to Scandinavia, and uh, the winds are going into the east next weekend. Uh, here comes that bitterly cold air from the east. There'd be uh, quite a bit of snow coming in with that as well. We keep it cold and blocked as we go through into uh, the extended range as well. And then this takes us up to the end of GFS run. Well, again, we're trying to bring some slightly milder air up from the south. Everything maintained with ensemble member number one. Ensemble member number two has high pressure going up to Scandinavia at the end of the week. Here comes the easterly winds next weekend, bringing the air in from uh, Russia and the Urals. That's a proper easterly bar, uh, blast beast from the east type territory there on ensemble member number two. And we keep it cold and blocked as we go through into the extended range as well. Ensemble member number three looks like that for Thursday, taking high pressure up to uh, Scandinavia, it intensifies next weekend, so there is the easterly wind, again bringing the air in from quite a long way east, very quickly this on some is taking the high pressure up to Greenland, so um, just really cold, snowy, wintry weather there as we go through the final few days of February and on into the beginning of March, on some member before. Easterly winds coming in as early as uh, Thursday and then even by Saturday, ensemble member number four is bringing bitterly cold air in from the east. So this might all happen even quicker than we think. We're thinking around Sunday, Monday to get this bitterly cold air in. But this ensemble member number four is bringing in really, really bitterly cold air as early as Saturday. And a lot of heavy snow will be coming in with that as well. Uh, then low pressure is having a go at getting in from the Atlantic. So a bit of a snow event and then possibly turning a little bit milder there through the opening days of uh, March, though the pattern still looks quite a cold and um, block one really. Ensemble member number five has a high pressure over uh, Scandinavia by the time you get through to the end of the week and next weekend we are strengthening the easterly wind. Look how far east the wind is uh, coming from. It's coming right way back to Russia so it's bound to be bitterly cold there with ensemble member uh, number five and we keep this cold and blocked weather going right the way through into uh, the first week of March as well. That's locked in bitter, cold and snowy weather 
We've got Soulmate number five. Number six looks like that. We've got the Easterly Wind um, strengthening and intensifying. Big cold pool moving in from our east as well next weekend. So uh, really wintry stuff for next weekend. And then we go through into the final days of February. Um, and we're maintaining cold weather really uh, with the block just to our east right way through that first week of February. Have we go again a bit milder as you get to the end of the run. Remember, most of these ensemble members are going to try to get us back, most of these models will try to get us back to uh, milder and less block condition, because that's like the default setup. But um, whether it comes off in reality is always subject to change. This is ensemble member number seven. Uh, everything continues with this ensemble member. We've got the wind in from the east, so it's bitterly cold as we go through the weekend and on into the final days of February. Really cold east winds, no doubt bringing quite a lot of snow with this one as well. Have we go again a bit milder right at the end. That's ensemble member number eight. High pressure going up to uh, Scandinavia. The wind going into the east. All ensemble members are singing from the same hymn sheet uh, for next weekend. That's when we get those winds into the east. Uh, although this one's actually a little bit, uh, a little bit modified. So high pressure is more centred towards Scotland. Interestingly, so uh, we don't quite get such a cold easterly there. However, it is setting up high pressure enemy extended range close to Greenland. And Iceland. So what we lose out from the east, um, we uh, pick up from the north. And this is a very cold and wintry extended uh, ensemble member going into the first week of March with number eight. Number nine, uh, again, taking high pressure up to Scandinavia on Thursday. And then what's going to become of it next weekend? So again, off we go with those easterly winds, bitterly cold, and a lot of snow being dragged in from the east. That's very, very blocked uh set up real northern blocking locked in cold uh with ensemble member number nine for uh the uh, first week of march number 10 we're halfway through shows a high pressure up over scandinavia um as we go through into the weekend bringing the most bitterly cold easterly winds and we maintain those bitterly cold easterly winds through into the first days of march trying to bring low pressure and slightly milder air up from the Atlantic, but essentially we're still blocked and cold even at the end of the run. Number 11 with high pressure over Scandinavia at the end of the week, and we intensify that high pressure and pull in bitterly cold air from the east over the weekend and into the start of the following week. Again, easterly winds screaming in with that bitterly cold air, uh, bringing no doubt quite a lot of snow as well. All the detail on the snow will be firmed up on in the next few days, so we maintain cold weather really through to the end of a run. The Atlantic is being blocked by this area of high pressure to our east. So even into the second week of March, that one is cold and wintry. Uh, number 12, again taking the high pressure up to Scandinavia at the end of the weekend, next weekend. Here comes the easterly wind, particularly affecting England and Wales with bitterly cold temperatures and probably quite a lot of heavy snow as well. Then the high pressure's on the move, trying to get itself more towards uh, Greenland and so we keep cold weather going through to the extended range we are still firmly locked in cold weather uh, for the second week of March with ensemble number 12. Number 13 again the easterly wind is um, continuing and it's strengthening over weekend and into next week as well they're all slightly different, all variations of the theme but broadly they're all very very similar what we're looking at tonight uh, this is what you've been waiting for you've been waiting for cold and snowy weather, this is it, this is um, what you've been uh, waiting quite a long time for, probably waiting all winter for. This is number 14 again Again, we've got those easterly winds uh, setting up over the weekend and into uh, the start of the following week as well. Perhaps not quite such a long fetch easterly, although having said that, I mean, look at that for Thursday the 1st of March, a little bit beyond day 10. But look how far the east winds are coming in from right the way from uh, Russia. And we just keep it cold and very blocked as we go into the second week of March as well. Cold weather is maintained. These are probably the best um, ensembles that we've seen all winter, I would have thought, if you want cold and uh, snowy weather. The only caveat is it is quite late now 
in the winter, so it's not going to be as cold as it would have been if it had been uh, sort of the late December or January. But nevertheless, still um, really cold stuff going on. Uh, here, this on summer number 15. Again, you'll notice by 27th of February, Tuesday, 27th of February, we've got severely cold air across the country and no doubt a lot of heavy snow uh, coming in with that as well right at the very end trying to turn things a bit milder as uh, these models will always try to do this is number 16 again the high pressure is uh, to our east uh, by the time you get through to next weekend um perhaps struggling a little bit more with this ensemble member to set up that long fetch easterly but nevertheless still pretty cold um it's like the, one of the mildest solutions we've seen actually for uh, the very end of february and even this is still quite cold and blocked and pretty wintry especially for the south and the east this is number 17 Easy winds are in as early as uh, Thursday, and those winds just continue through the uh, coming weekend, so it turns very cold uh, indeed, and uh, I suspect there will be some snow around with that one as well. Uh, it stays cold and blocked right way through to the second week of uh, March. Uh, this is uh, number 18. Again, we've got the easterly winds really setting up uh, over the weekend. Maybe not quite such a long fetch with those easterly winds. Um, so perhaps not quite as cold and snowy, that one, number 18. But again, it's all variations of the theme. The general theme is high pressures over Scandinavia. We're blocking off the Atlantic, and we are threatening to bring in some uh, very cold air from the east. This is number 19, penultimately, for the GFS ensembles. And we look like that, strengthening the high pressure again over Scandinavia at the weekend. Here comes those cold easterly winds. These a little bit more centred with the uh, depth of cold to our south and to our east. So again, the severity of this cold punch is a little bit open to question. And then finally, we're up to number 20. And uh, what we see for this one is that, again, the high pressure is up to the north, northeast of the country. So again, we're bringing in those cold uh, easterly winds as we go through into the extended range. We look like, we look like that cold and blocked um we're on summer number 20 right way through to the 6th of march this is how the gfs ensemble graph is looking it's probably the coldest ensemble graph that we've had this winter maybe the coldest ensemble graph we've had for quite a few winters um look how far below the red line which is the 30 year upper air temperature average the ensembles are going most ensemble members now are going down between minus 10 and minus 15 at 850 hp this is for london by the way, uh, so bitterly cold, and these precipitation spikes that you see here, whilst they're not numerous and they're not big precipitation spikes, they would all be delivering snow, or nearly all of them would be delivering snow. Finally, let's just have a look at the ECMWF. It's been updating as I've been speaking. We're not going to be able to get to the end of it, but we can go to 168 hours. And there we go. It looks like it's going to be another classic ECM. Uh, run. We've got high pressure in a week's time centred over Scandinavia. The wind is going into the east. Let's have a look at the upper air temperatures. Not quite bringing the cold pool in from the east uh, up to next sunny. But if we could go on another day or two, which we can't because I'm going to stop the video uh, now. But if we could go on, there's nothing to stop this very cold pool of air that's sitting over northeastern Europe from flooding our way on those uh, easterly winds. So it's all still on course. That's the message from tonight's Ensemble Watch. Uh, it's just a case of how quickly do the easterly winds get in. Some of those Ensemble members were bringing real easterlies in as early as around Thursday or Friday. But I think they're a little bit over the top. And I think we're focusing for a slack easterly flow, slack, a slack continental flow as early as Thursday, Friday. But the real easterly gets going in around a week's time, I think. So Sunday to Monday is when we are focusing on the real easterly to arrive. And then that carries us off through the final days of February and into the start of March, where all the evidence is that it's going to be turning really cold and probably with a lot of disruptive snow as well. It's all just still ever so slightly far enough away for adjustments to uh, certainly limit the severity of the cold. I think that is still open 
to some question. I think we will get a cold easy. I think we will get some snow to the end of February and the start of March. The question is going to be how cold and snowy does it get? And we are still just about far enough away from this for some doubt uh, in terms of bringing in that really severe air from uh, northeastern and eastern parts of Europe. But uh, certainly there's nothing that's gone wrong here if you want cold weather. You've been, probably been, been expecting uh, downgrades. You've probably been expecting uh, the whole thing to start going wrong. There's no sign of that tonight. It's all rock solid at this point um, for uh, really cold and wintry weather for uh, the end of February and in of March. So let's just wait and see uh, whether this uh, continues, uh, these model, this consistency with, with in the models continues uh, for the next few days and keep checking back for more updates of course right that's all for now thanks for watching